Is Michael Jackson, the king of pop, morphing into Michael Jackson, the king of paedophiles? Details that nobody could make up. He's not here to defend himself, fend himself, sell, 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 sell. Welcome to Law Cracker, where we take interesting legal stories and break them down. No BS. Okay, today we're going to talk about Michael Jackson, the king of pop. What is going on? There's this documentary, these two complainants, both of whom say they were abused by Michael Jackson. The stories are apparently consistent. It's not the first time we had claims like this about Michael Jackson. There was a criminal trial a few years ago. MJ was found not guilty. There was an out-of-court settlement in the 90s which kicked all of this off with a kid called Jordan Chandler. The dad later committed suicide. MJ settled that case for $23 million rather than go to a civil court. Now these claims are made in a way and presented in this detailed two-part documentary in a way that looks immediately compelling. The stories are harrowing and there are stories not just of the abuse but in one case even of a sham marriage ceremony between Michael and one of the boys. These seem like details that nobody could make up. This is all in the context of what we know about Michael Jackson. In the 80s and 90s he's the most famous man on the planet living in a children's theme park by his own admission he sleeps platonically with those children in his own bed one of the things is how similar the grooming method of michael jackson appears to be on both of these children the way in which he moved into their families and manipulated them and as a result of this documentary Parts of the music industry are becoming very equivocal about Michael Jackson. People are distancing themselves. People are saying, well, he's not a paedophile, but we're kind of very hesitant about his legacy. Is Michael Jackson, the king of pop, morphing into Michael Jackson, the king of paedophiles? And is a documentary a good way to form that opinion? Even if this evidence was presented in a legal context, even in a civil court, probably definitely a criminal court, there's massive doubt as to whether there could ever be a conviction. Some people may point out, obviously, that these harrowing stories are strikingly similar. But of course, you don't know whether there was any contact between them. And because it's not a real legal process, those protections won't be in place. They also haven't been tested by cross-examination. That's when the other side's lawyer asks questions trying to catch the person out. Now you can simulate that in a documentary, you can ask them the tough questions. That hasn't happened here. These guys also were staunch supporters of Michael Jackson before and while they may have been under his spell and all of that when the previous criminal case was going on, they supported him, you know, and they'd be cross-examined, they'd be challenged about that too and that hasn't happened here. Of course, there are two explanations for that. If they were under his spell, they were still essentially under the control of the groomer. There also seems to be a really one-sided and non-forensic approach to this documentary in that they haven't spoken to people on both sides, people who contradict the story. All of this, if Michael Jackson was still alive, would be shrouded or kind of enveloped in the principle of innocent until proven guilty and beyond reasonable doubt. And that means he would be afforded the protection, the human right, if you will, of being considered an innocent man. So can we say, therefore, that his reputation remains intact? He's not here to defend himself. That kind of cuts both ways, doesn't it? If he is guilty, the victims have been denied justice too, haven't they? Now, the law says that while you are alive, you have that right, that human right, to be considered innocent until proven guilty. Is it the case that he should still, in death, his memory, be afforded that right? Well, actually, the reason that that right exists is not to protect people's memories, not to control people's thoughts from thinking that you've done something, but to stop innocent people going to prison. And here's the thing. Courts protect the living. They don't interfere with opinions about the dead. We're probably at the stage now where thinking about Michael Jackson's guilt or innocence in legal terms is probably irrelevant. What we have to do is take all the information we're given. He was kind of a weird, innocent character, at the same time a victim of abuse himself. The fact that he lived in a children's theme park and the fact that there were kind of some fairly strange inconsistencies about the way in which those allegations appear to have been made. We take all of that and we make our own minds up. The king is dead. The law can't judge him. That is now history's job. This was the Law Cracker. Tell me what you think. Like, share, expand. Shamon.
Tata.